All right, let's get rolling. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is the Valor Soccer Team Formation Meeting for our high school age girls, U16 to U19. The rock stars. We're back. The round th two this yeah. year. Yeah. Round, well, no, round this three. Third. This round third three because of the boys. We're like veterans. Yeah, yeah, this is easy for us now. We even know where the camera is. It's right over there. Yeah, we keep staring in the wrong space, but... Christy reminds us it's the giant glowing thing. <laughs> okay, so we're trying our best. Well, uh, and the good news, of course, Ray, is the fact that uh, it's about 30 degrees cooler in this room than it was right. when we did the one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's uh, 69 in here, so 92 last time or something. And he's not exaggerating. It was 92 degrees in here when we did the U9 to U15 formation meeting. So what the, uh, the bad news is the air conditioning, we're still working on it. Still sorting it out. But the good yeah. news is we don't need air conditioning today. We don't need it today. No. We're ready to go. So let's get rolling so we can get through this. We said 7 to 8 o'clock. We're going to do our best to get through this in 42 minutes. Ready? I'm ready. Go. Let's do it. Uh, just so you know, we will not be monitoring the chat or taking questions during this presentation. Uh, we are on the Twitch channel doing it. And this gives us an opportunity to get through these as quick as we can. But we do want you to reach out to us if you do have questions. Oh, and your team's head coach will be holding a separate virtual team meeting to answer questions by this Sunday. Uh, and they will get that announced to you as soon as they have it set up. Okay? All right, let's go. Just so you guys know, we got, uh, we got about... 30 slides or so to get through. So we're going to cruise as, as fast as we can, but make sure we give you as much information as possible. Uh, the Valor Pride keeps getting bigger. This will be another big step forward for us as one of the fastest growing clubs in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we're really proud of this club. We're really excited for this year. And as you can see here, we had over 950 players out at tryouts over the last couple months here. Um, 56 Premier and Select teams are formed. We have premier gold teams that are going to compete in the USYS Elite 64 and the RCL. we got our black, gray, and white teams competing in the RCL. Uh, if you don't know what the RCL is, that's a regional club league. That's one of the top leagues in the country and definitely the top league in the state. Uh, and then our select teams are going to compete in the North Puget Sound League or the NPSL, if you hear us say that later. Another really, really well-run league, good competition. Um, and so that's where we compete. And our, our Valor teams are led by some of the most experienced and highly licensed coaches in Washington. And some of the best looking coaches as well. Well, two of them for yeah, sure. I yeah, know that. Yeah. We are all representing our pride at all times. <laughs> and we're allowed to have a little fun with this tonight too, by the way. So uh, we will do that. Our core values uh, put right on our crest, the courage, integrity, honor. You can see it on every one of the uniforms we have. We're very proud of these three words. And just a little bit of um, definition for you if you want it. Courage. Are you brave and strong enough to do something hard? We ask ourselves this every day. Integrity. Do you choose what is right before what is fast or easy? Sometimes you can do it the easy way and get it over with, but you might not learn anything. So we say, let's have integrity and do it the right way. And then honor. Can you adhere to high standard and treat all with respect? And we try to do this in every decision we make here. All right, quick agenda for you. We are going to talk about the teams and coaches we have. We'll share a little bit about our Valor technical staff, our leadership, our partners, our affiliates. The Valor way. What does that mean? And kind of some principles and style of play in there. U.S. Youth Soccer's Elite 64 program. For a little over half of the teams in this age group, they are going to be competing in the Elite 64 program. E64, you're going to hear us call it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you some info on that. Uh, important Valor policies and product protocols. Valor sideline behavior and expectations. Registration. Club dues and fees. Financial aid. Volunteer program. And the amazing and awesome Valor Day. Uniform ordering process. Uh, Valor player resource and college placement program. And then our alumni that are heading to the next level and a little bit of a calendar at the end. Yep. We'll let you know at the end exactly what your year will look like. So you got to stick around for that. Just under 40 minutes till that amazing slide comes up. 39 minutes, Ray. 39 minutes. Here's the teams we got in this age group from the 2008 to 2005 girls teams. 
Uh, we got Jesse Wheelock on the gold, 2008, Paul McElvaney and Prashio Gounder. Uh, these are three awesome coaches. Uh, we're really excited to have all three of these guys back and looking forward to uh, some real competitive teams there. In the 07 age group, my guy right here, Keith Blyer. Never heard of him. <laughs> and then for our oldest U19 girls, we have Jacqueline Rigtrap. Uh, we're really excited for Jacqueline to take this team. Uh, she's been working extremely hard, so I'm excited to watch her. Yes, and a new holder of the U.S. Soccer B license. That's so right. how about that? And you can call her Q. We call her Q. Yeah. A couple photos. A couple photos of the, of the crew. Uh, yeah, take a look at us. We're doing, we're doing great up there. And uh, on the bottom, we got our CEO, our COO. Our OC and our CD. <laughs> OCCD, yeah. <what>? OCCD. <laughs> All right. That's the staff. That Dean, we... Rachel, Jenny, Christy. Those are the ones that make it work. The four or five of us up there, five. There we go. Well, it makes sense, actually, because they prop us up, right? Yeah. I mean, with, without like that, we're like puppets. We're like puppets compared to the ones on the bottom. Now you can see some of the licensing on here. Uh, we've all worked very hard to do this, so uh, let's do this. Yep. Boom. Our partners. Our partners right here. We got a lot of them. Uh, Tacoma Stars. Uh, big partners of ours. They play right here in the Kent area. Um, they've decided to jump on as a, as a shirt sponsor this year. We're really excited to work with them. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, we may or may not have had one of their stars in our office today. We one may or may players. not have. Yeah. This is. Yeah. yeah. Come, in here. Yeah. Big shot. Yeah. We'll keep it quiet. Keith, but Keith was a little starstruck. Almost asked for his autograph. Almost. <laughs> Capelli Sport, our new uniform uh, su supplier and partner in a whole bunch of things. Uh, they're offering some really cool opportunities for our players, uh, as well as uh, great uniforms. So we are really excited to work with Capelli. Uh, VO does all of our video. We have Team Genius. You may have heard me out there talking about the app that we use for evaluations and tryouts. And then Sports Connect is our registration platform. If you've worked with Jenny at all, you've probably heard of Sports Connect. Um, and then we got our sports recruits for our college placement program, uh, Soccer Profile, Pro Score, Evolve One, NCSA, and Stat Sports are all our partners with Elite 64 and throughout the club here. I spent a lot of time on that partners one this time. Usually we go through that pretty quick. So you're welcome, partners. I'll tell you what, by the by the eighth time we do this, you'll have it perfected. Yeah. That's... Oh, wait, we only do it. Oh, this is the last one. Dang. Well, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe new partners. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's our leagues. We got USU Soccer, uh, which is uh, the, the top league and the top uh, governing body for soccer here. Uh, and then Washington U Soccer is the next one for us. Uh, but under U.S. Youth, we play in the Elite 64. You can see the E64 logo there. You're going to see that a lot this yep. year. And then the RCL and North Puget Sound League for our competitive programs. The Valor Way. This is KB's turn. Oh, thus the little KB down in the corner. That's how see, I realized these, it. These are the little tricks that we use, but nobody, you know, they, they, it's not going to slide by them. These are very intelligent young ladies who are watching tonight, so they're going to yeah. see the KB and they're going to know it's it's time. Uh, and there's one of our uh, one of our uh, players, Tori Ord, who uh, is headed to the college soccer level. Congratulations to her. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say tonight. And we've got a whole bunch of them that are doing that. Uh, and part of the reason that they get there. Um, that they are ready for the next step is, we believe, the way that we're trying to develop players uh, within our pride. So we call it the Valor Way. And you've heard a lot about that. You'll hear more. Um, I, you know, I fully acknowledge that um, it's a work in progress. Um, we are evolving uh, into what we want the Valor Way to be. But when it comes to building players, for us, there's really no secret, okay? First of all, it has to be a positive enjoyment. You've got to be supported. So um, I, I, we're doing something wrong if you're not excited to come to training, if you're not looking forward to every single time you've got the Valor Crest on your on your chest, okay? Um, we're really big in the development of you as a soccer player. In fact, and this is a big word, we prioritize the individual development of players. Uh, it is more important to us than winning soccer matches. But you know what? If you build a lot of really good soccer players... Yeah, you win some games. You win, and you win the big games. So look at that. Games. Yeah, look at that quote at the bottom, okay? 
So you talk about, you know, integrity, taking, you know, taking the time to do something right and well. You guys, and by you, I mean the U16 to U19 players, you're the ones that we hope have developed to a point uh, where you're winning big games by playing real soccer. Uh, and it's not always easy. And it takes some real bravery, but those are the sweetest ones. We want you to play a certain way. Uh, we're still working on what the club style of play is. More on that in a second. Um, but I guess the easiest way to put this is it ain't about boot ball. And it's not about just smashing the ball up the field, running into somebody and hoping you get lucky. We want to play true team soccer that you're really excited about. We want to compete in every match. And I said this to even the younger ones a few days ago as I was sweating in here. <laughs> um, we want you to play competitively, not only in every match, but every training session. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, sportsmanship. That is the most important thing. That's the third core value, right? Honor. Um, can you be classy at all times? It's not always easy, right? You, you, blood gets pumping. That one girl says that one thing. And, you know, next thing you know, you're like, oh, can I still, can I still be classy? Yeah, you can. It's hard. Okay, so the style of play, we won't spend too much on this, but I just want to give you a few ideas, ladies, okay? Uh, first of all, do you want to control the ball when it reaches you, or do you panic and just put your foot through it? And I hope the answer is the former, not the latter. We want you to control the ball. We want our teams to secure possession. Now, if you can make a vertical pass or what we call a line-breaking pass right away, fantastic. But we want to see the idea that you have, not the panic. Control the ball, secure possession, okay? Um, we also want you to be able to defend very well in those transitional moments. I talked to this, uh, talked to a few players about this during the tryouts a couple days ago. Um, are you quick in your transitional play? Do you know who pressures the ball? Do you know when you go high press or do you just yell high press? Cause everybody wants to yell high press. It's got, it's got to be when that moment is the right one. Uh, defending, we want you to be smart about it. We want you to pressure the ball. We want you to block the passing lanes, but we want you to contain the ball first uh, and not do that diving in that I'm sure you've, you're have you trying to uh, limit. And then, of course, when we win the ball, that first pass, can we make the first pass or two? And can we expand and make the field big? We believe Valor soccer teams should use the width of the field, play around opponents as much as we play over the top of them. So just a couple little concepts on the uh, principles and the style of play. The pop and sop. I call pop it pop and, and sop. sop. Yeah. Um, now I'm just thirsty. <clears throat> and sopping. And, and, and I was sopping wet a few <laughs> days ago. I can tell you, I lost five pounds when we did this last week. Um, much more comfortable today. Here's the performance phase. This is the one that you're in. So you've gone through our other phases, you know, the developmental phases, the learning phases, all those things. And now it's, you know, obviously about putting it all together and competing, right? We want it to be enjoyable. We want your training to be challenging. Um, we're going to ask you, this is an important, important point to make. You are now at the age where you are tasked with your own physical development and maintenance. And that's a fancy way to stay or to, to say, can you stay in shape? Right. Mm -hmm. And part of that is uh, plyometrics and injury prevention and those things. Uh, really important. Um, so, yes, there is some fitness that's involved in it. And a lot of it is done on your own time. And then we want you to be fluent in the style of play. We want you to actually apply that. And we want to try to play you in multiple formations. Right. Yeah. And we've we've really worked hard on that. We have. And, you know, going back to that middle one there, just the, the development and maintenance you're going to have the ability to manage that, but we are here to help you. We will give you information if you want it. Mm -hmm. um, Keith has done a great job of putting together some of this nutrition and fitness stuff. So, Yep, it's all there for you, and you need to use the right things and make the right choices. You know, Going out and running two miles is fine. That will help you as a soccer player, but if that's all you do, then maybe that anaerobic work and the stuff that is really important, the interval work that really is uh, valuable to soccer players is being ignored. You can see it's a nice mix of all the things at your age. How many formations did you play last year with your team, Keith? Well, I had the young ones. So, okay. yeah. So, I had, yeah. So, we have, we have a more mandated formation at the younger ages. But when, when the girls get to this age, as you know, Ray, um, we want them to be uh, experienced at least, uh, not, if not fluent, at least comfortable in different formations. The 06 team that I had, you yeah. know, up until a year ago, we played 4 3 3, we played 3 5 2. Uh, played four five one at one point in Spokane. So yeah, 
And it works. And it works. Um, here are some recent successes of the Valor Way. This is all within the last year. So our 2007 Gold Boys, they won the State Cup. That is a huge accomplishment. Head into regionals in less than a month. Yeah, where is it? About a month. Boise. Boise, yeah. Idaho. Yeah. Yep. You know when you want to win state? You want to win state when the regionals are in Hawaii. Next year. Which is next year. Next That's right. Year. I knew you'd uh, All right. So anybody wins a state cup, you're going to Hawaii. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, founder you can get there from here. Of course. Yep. Uh, Founders Cup was won by our uh, our 2008 select team, um, a team that's been together a long time, um, and things fell into place for them. And then at the younger ages, we had the 2013 Premier Black team. Uh, make a fun run all the way to the final of the President's Cup. Now, I know what we're missing on this slide. What we're missing is a U16 to U19 girls team. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the coach might have a little something to do with whether or not this slide was put in there. I'm very proud of this group. And um, <laughs> last year, so this is just a year ago, right, yeah. a year and two weeks ago, uh, our 06 gold team won what we call the double. They won their RCL League Division Two. Uh, and they won the President's Cup at the Division One level, um, won their last 10 matches, and this is the team that could play in those formations. Um, a lot of these talented players in that picture coming back to us. Yeah, yep. a couple of them getting ready to head to college also. Yep, correct. Back to me. All right, here we go. Valor Soccer and the Elite 64 program. Uh, we are really proud of this program. We're really excited to be part of it. We have, you know, we joined uh, and were invited to the Elite 64 program last year in their inaugural season. And, uh, you know, uh, just like anything, had a couple hiccups, but the showcases and the environments for competitions were fantastic. We played in some amazing uh, games and our teams that played last year are getting ready to go to nationals in uh, the end of June and July for the boys and we're really excited to represent there for E64 Nationals. But what's this next season look like? Well, it's going to be a lot different. Yeah. Um, you know, myself uh, working with USU Soccer on a lot of ideas on how to make the Elite 64 program um, better, and especially better for the Northwest Conference. Uh, we've done a lot of, lot of things. So the first slide here is the playoff slide. And what they're doing this year, instead of all these showcases that they did last year, which were decent and good competition, they're going to make every game worth something now. So now you're going to play, you know, for the girls, you're going to play a league play, and then you're going to go down to Arizona, stay on the West Coast, and play in the Elite 64 playoffs. And each of these teams will play in, in this tournament uh, for the opportunity to advance and play in what they're calling the National League Pro event which again will be on the West Coast in California. Um, so this will be uh, for all the high school age girls will have this opportunity. Now, if they do really well there, then you get the opportunity to go to the USU Soccer National Championships, which will be in Florida um, next year, July. Okay, league play. Uh, so in our league, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have six other clubs in the Northwest Conference. Um, and we'll play a minimum of nine games. I think it's going to be 10 games now that I'm look, now that I'm working with them. And we should have more information on the leagues and when these, uh, these weekends are going to be for these events, hopefully within the next, uh, before June. Um, that's what I'm okay. shooting for with these guys is before June. Uh, we're waiting for these two clubs to finalize their, uh, their last little the bit so they can, they don't want us to announce until they can do it on their website, but we're adding a new Washington team and we're adding three Utah teams uh, to the Northwest Conference. So there'll be three event weekends for the for the league play. One will be likely in Utah, one is here, Washington, and one will be in Oregon, Portland area. Okay? So I'm not great at math here, Ray, but what you're telling me is they're gonna you're gonna play usually more than two matches on these weekends, right? You might play yeah. three matches on three maybe yeah. one weekend might be a four gamer. So wow. you play yeah. everybody twice. So we have six in there, that's five times two, that's ten. Yeah, so some, you know, I one of what that's good. Very good. Wow. Yeah, I've been working on it. Yeah, you were good. Took at that. it out of the slide. Yeah. Thought I could freestyle yeah. that one. <laughs> but I know there was some talk about do we have to go all the way to Salt Lake City to play one team in E64? And the answer to that is no. No. You're, you're going to play, go play multiple matches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So as far as those league, though, because the high school age girls take a break in the fall for the high school season, we are working with them right now to figure out what the best timing is for yeah. league play. Utah also and Oregon also all have those yeah. fall seasons for well, helps, girls yeah. soccer. All right. And here's those uh, partners again that we talked about. We have the soccer profile, which is new this year. And if anybody's an old uh, English Premier League fan, uh, Gary Monk, Monk yeah. running the show over there at Sports Profile. Looks like an uh, interesting new thing. So we're learning about that. Pro Score is fantastic. Has a ton of uh, video editing. And last year they, they gave us Pro Score. They did all the games. It was really cool. But there was an option to pay for this $100 player um, kind of uh, addition, and it would give you all your player stuff. This year, boom, Pro Score and USU Soccer said, we're giving that to every player. Wow, cool. Okay, I didn't we're Giving know that, that to every player. See, that's why I come in here and do this with you. I learn things. Yeah. And then Evolve One is a mental health app that we've been working with. The owner is a friend of ours. She has been putting a ton of effort into this. We're really excited to roll this out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's Evolve One. If you want to look it up, it's really cool. Uh, NCSA is a college recruiting uh, program that the um, U.S. Youth and E64 have offered to every player to have. And Keith has been diving into that, and he loves college recruiting. So he's been all over it. And then Stat Sports, if you've seen us out there, we got the, the sports tops on with the, the trackers, and the kids love them. Yep. How many miles did you run? How fast? Now, the funny thing for me was one of the boys I had last year, he said, Coach, did you see how fast I ran yesterday? And I said, oh, I haven't looked yet. 31 miles an hour. Now that is a feat. Now the kid was about 12 minutes late to practice, so it sounded like the car may have been doing a little work for him on the way there, but... He turned that tracker on about three miles away from Petrovitsky Park, yeah. And he probably slowed down, too. That's the scary thing. Funny. Yeah, those trackers are really cool. Yeah, that, they've been pretty cool. All right, uh, we're going to give you one, new, one update to a policy inside Valor, and that's our playing time policy, okay? All competitive players who are currently in good standing with her team and the club are guaranteed a minimum of 15 minutes of playing time each league tournament or cup match. Um, and this, you can read the fine print here. This policy does not apply to U15 through U19. That's you guys who are playing in the Elite 64 and Washington State Cup Championships, okay? Remember, this is the competitive phase, and we're putting it all together. So we just wanted to give you this updated uh, playing time policy. We're happy to chat about it. Um, or your coaches, you can ask them questions, and they'll probably come to myself or Keith. So worth repeating, it is an important part of this. It used to be 20 minutes, if you recall the playing time policy. So we have changed this a little bit. We've reduced it to 15. And as you, as you can see, any E64 match, so E64 playoffs, E64 league play, or if you're in a state cup match, this playing policy does this. This playing policy minimum of 15 minutes does not apply to those matches. Now we have very experienced coaches who are, you know, really care about the development of players. We're going to do everything we can. But would you, as players, agree that you should earn your playing time, especially at your age? I would hope most of you are are nodding your head. Um, yeah, this this is a, what we believe is a fair but important adjustment to make our teams at the highest and oldest levels even more competitive. That's right. And the one other thing that made us think about this and put a little more thought into it was the substitution rules in the E64 and the state championships mm -hmm. are a little bit different. So we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to share that as we get going. But just an update for y'all. Here's a couple of our oldies, but goodies. <laughs> Uh, severe weather policy. We put, you know, a lot of effort into this to make sure it's a safe environment for the kids out there. This has both hot, cold, lightning, uh, snow, smoke, smoke, AQI. If anybody yeah. doesn't know those acronyms yet, uh, that's the air quality index. Okay. We, I even, uh, I even taught Ray what the wet bulb was. Wet bulb glow. Now, now he, now he won't leave now me alone I about, him it. about it. Every day, every summer. <laughs> What's the wet bulb, Blyer? <laughs> so but we do put a lot of effort into it and we do try to follow this policy as well as we can as much as we can so if you get frustrated that your training got canceled because it's 21 degrees uh, we're not doing it because we want the night off we want a safe environment for those kids to train in 
and and the consistency of all this too, right? So we want we want most teams to do well. We want all teams to do all things the Valor way. And part of the Valor way isn't necessarily isn't isn't ju- it's not just how you play. It's the fact that we are looking out for your well being, which also is part of that cancellation policy too, right? Right. Yeah, like, which is on there as well. The yeah. training cancellation. We got some rules in there. How do you manage after you played a tournament? Yeah. How do you manage after uh, you played a double header? Um, so a lot of info in there, and, and these are readily available. Your coaches will have access to them, and uh, or you can email myself or info, and we'll get it right over to you. Yeah, these these documents are available for you if you ask if you ask for them. All right, what's next? Unless it froze. We're, oh, hey, hey, all right. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, this is uh, more for mom and dad than it is for the players, although I think the players will get a kick out of a couple of these. Okay. Um, obviously, we care very much about everybody who's a part of our club, and it's not just the coaches and it's not just the players. If we have a group of classy parents, I am telling you it goes a long way. And I've had other coaches from other clubs come up to me and say, wow, your parents, they, they, they really know how to support their team. And when, when you find yourself coaching your daughter, I don't think it happens as much at this age, but there are, the, there are the, uh, a couple of you guys couple out, out there, there. Yeah, a couple out, you, out there. We won't name names, but uh, um, the reason we feel or, you know, uh, I believe because I agree with the, you know, what, what uh, Doug Lamov has written in his book. It's basically just the stress that's manifesting itself in the parents, right? You, you're nervous. You want your kid to play well. You want the team to win. You want your daughter to be happy after the match. Um, and you do know a lot about soccer. We totally understand that, but it can be very confusing for kids. So these are some slightly younger kids in this video. But take a look at, you know, hear from uh, the mouths of babes, if you will, in regards to um, what it's like to have coach yelling one thing and mom yelling another, or even just the same thing from the other sideline. It doesn't really matter if they compliment me on how I play. I just like, I don't know. I prefer my parents to, I don't not talk as much. I can hear them like cheering me on and I'm like thinking in my head, just shut it, I'm trying to focus. My mom yells in Spanish, like go, go, go. My mom just says, use the backboard, you should use the backboard. <coughs> so just a little snippet there. Um, I'm go, sure, go, yeah, go. I know. we like the one use the backboard because if... Yeah, you know, if a soccer parent is yelling, use the backboard. Um, yikes! Uh, but uh, I'm sure some of the some of the uh, teenage girls sitting on their couch watching us tonight probably are looking at mom and dad, going, ah, "I remember those days," and I hope they don't necessarily continue. Just just cheer for the team. Just cheer for them, right? Yeah. Applaud all the good moments, you know. Uh, and then there's, I've always said, there's nothing wrong with parents urging kids on. Come on, you can do this. Play hard. Those things are all fine. When this. yeah, when it becomes like almost um when it becomes instructional, I think that's when it gets difficult. Uh as for how we handle uh poor calls, how we handle 15-year-old referees uh learning on the job just like your daughter is, um hopefully you do everything in your power to just leave them alone. They will make mistakes. Although I've said this a hundred times, if you claim they made a mistake and you yell at them, they're not going to change their mind. I've never seen it happen in my, my 40 years in this sport. So uh, just try to try to relax a little bit rather than act like, uh, you know, this, this soccer mom here. <laughs> Hello there. If you're like most parents, your child doing well in sports is pretty darn important to you. In fact, you're probably willing to do whatever it takes to help them succeed. Even correct the refs when necessary. Back into it, right? Come on. You give them extra practices, tips on form, but what if I told you the real secret to giving them the edge? Would you do it? Great. Because it's you lightening up. Yes, lighten up. Um, it is just a game. Try to keep it all in perspective. Um, 
I like the kids in the background of that clip, like going, can we just play soccer here? You know? <laughs> um, and very rarely is it, uh, mom, thanks. You, you had my back. I really appreciate you yelling at the referee. That call was a bad one. Normally it's like, mom, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> so anyway, we're all representing our pride at all times. Just a little annual reminder for you. Thank you. All right, let's go through the registration process really quickly. Um, it looks a little bit different because Sports Connect has kind of changed, you know, the way it looks, but it's all still the, still the same. And, and half of you are already registered, so thank you very much. You, you should have gotten an email from Blue Sombrero. Check your spam folder if you haven't seen it yet. And then you click on uh, the link in the email to log into your Sports Connect account. There's a little click here thing. Uh, you go to the participants section of the account, you click accept, uh, and then once you've read the contract, you choose yes, you click continue, pretty self-explanatory as it walks you through this. Uh, and then it's time to make a, a deposit. Um, good news is you don't have to pay all this at once unless you want to. So we want to talk a little bit about club dues. And that's you, Ray, because look in the bottom corner. Oh, man. See, th this was for me more than yeah, it was. Yeah, this was for you last Keith, time. Keith, stop talking is what, what it should did. say. Well, I think you did this one last time. I think you're right. So you got it. Go ahead. All right. Well, here's the fees. Uh, they're competitive. They're in market. Uh, we've, we've tried to keep everything uh, in market and do a great job. You can see the Elite 64 program's got a little bit higher cost to it. Uh, about 350 bucks. Okay. This includes all those things down there below that we talked about, all those partners that we talked about. And this includes their, their, uh, you know, uh, registration to the E64 playoffs. If they get to the National League Pro event and if they get to nationals, all those things are as part of that along with their league play. All right. Um, quick reminder is by accepting a position on our premier gold team. Uh, secures your participation in Elite 64. There is not an option to opt out. Pay in full, like Keith said, if you want. Make some payments if you'd like. Here's the payment plan. Put a little money down. Make nine monthly installments. And uh, they charge you a little bit more if you do that as far as uh, service fee and whatnot. Team fees. Okay, these are different than club dues. The team fees are per team. And for sure, Keith did these slides last time. Uh, <laughs> these fees are calculated by the team manager and the team treasurer. A couple examples. This could be for uh, entry fees outside the Elite 64. So any of the tournaments you do this summer, there will be a little team fee for that. Travel expenses, expenses for team members, coaches, chaperones. And then if you're going to do some team building activities or end of your party or something, your team treasurer might ask you to collect a couple bucks so everybody can do that. OK, team coaches and managers are strongly encouraged to communicate and gain approval from the club's management and team members before committing to any events or purchases that will lead to families incurring significant additional fees. OK, um, and then we talk about fundraisers. There's a couple here, but make sure you get the okay from uh, Valor before you just jump into a fundraiser. We got a couple rules here. Um, Rachel Wilton, our chief operations officer, will approve it or deny it if there's a, and if we do deny it, we'll let you know what the reason is so we can find another good one for you to do. And a lot of our teams do fundraisers. So if you need some ideas, you might reach out as well. Oh, man. Last time I did most of the slides, too. You're really dragging me into this. <laughs> All right. I just put that RJ in there. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I take the night off. You know what it was? I drug that over from the high school boys one, and it probably had Oh, so, so it's your there. fault. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just yeah. realized yeah. this. It's going to say my initials again probably at some point. <laughs> all right. Financial aid. Um we're dedicated to providing players of all economic backgrounds with the opportunity to play soccer. So we do have financial aid. We do, however, have a deadline that we have to have all the information in so that we can get through it and, and give financial aid out in a proper manner. OK, you must complete the financial aid application after you have been offered a placement on Premier or Select team. Um, and you have accepted the offer and have completed the Premier Select program registration. OK. When you're completing the Premier Select Program registration, applicants must do the following. You have to choose the payment plan option and pay the initial deposit. Before you get your financial aid, you have to pay this, pay this deposit, okay? Choose a response of no when you're asked if you'd like to opt out of volunteer hours. Our financial aid applicants cannot opt out of volunteer hours. We ask 
all of them to make sure that they do their volunteer hours and help out a little bit. Um, okay. And then we have a committee that goes through, uh, all the financial aid applications and we, um, you know, decide how much we can help out and what, what the financial need is for each player. And that deadline is June 2nd. That's coming up. That's a week from Friday. Yes. Coming right up for you guys. So make sure you do these steps and fill out the financial aid application. If you have questions, okay, go to dollarsoccer.com financial aid. If you still have questions, Email info and we'll make sure it gets to the right spot, okay? Yeah, look at see that down yeah, there? You're right, you're right. You gave yourself a nice gave big myself block. An extra chunk. Good night, everybody. I'm going home. Good night. All right. Volunteer hours. Ah, let me clear my throat. Get ready for another long one. Uh, volunteer hours, okay. Each premier and select family is obligated to serve eight hours of volunteer time over the course of playing cycle. Okay. Uh, so if you got brothers and sisters in this, uh, family is obligated, not each player. Okay. Volunteer opportunities include tasks that support Valor as a whole, such as setting up on game days, assisting club events, administrative support. We send out stuff every week looking for volunteer hours. I will tell you this, being the carpool driver for your team is not volunteer hours for Valor. Now we really do appreciate it. And we think you're an amazing human for doing that, but those are not volunteer hours for Valor. Okay. Uh, we get that question every year. I promise you that. Do you? Yes. Okay. Ask we, for gas money. And yeah. we appreciate those yes. people. Thank you yeah. for getting extra kids to training. Yeah, yeah. Just just ask for the gas money from yeah, the Yeah, have from each the other, other players other bring mom. $12 yeah. with them. Yeah, or they're not allowed in your car without cookies or something. <laughs> At the time of registration, you may choose to opt out of this. Okay. So you uh, can pay a $150 one-time fee if you want to opt out if you have a lot going on and you just don't have time to volunteer, um, you can pay the opt out of 150. Why do we collect this? Sometimes we got to hire extra help to do things. And so we put that money in a space where we can hire that extra help if we need it. Okay. Mm. If you do not choose to opt out and you do not complete your volunteer hours in full, you will be charged $200. Okay. This is somebody that says, I'm going to, I'm going to volunteer. I got you. No problem. And then they get busy or they forget and they don't get it done by March 3rd. We're going to charge you $200. Okay. You can still catch up your hours and get your money back. So you're saying they got 10 months to 10 do months. eight hours of work. That's right. Okay. And, and we sent, I can tell you this, we sent out almost weekly. I won't say weekly because there was a couple breaks in there where we didn't need volunteers, but almost weekly we send out things and we probably only fill about 50 five to 60% of our volunteer hours that we offer every year. Okay. So it's out there. Okay. You have to have everything done by April 28th. Otherwise no more refund. Uh, game over. We're done. We're moving on to the next year. Here's some more stuff about that. Uh, volunteer opportunities that we have here at the club. So if you're a select head coach, boom, knocking it out. Assistant coach, approved assistant coach. Don't sign up to be an assistant coach without telling the head coach or myself, the director <laughs> of coaching. We'd like to know you're an assistant coach so we can help you with that. And we got to do a lot of paperwork to make sure that you're safe and able to be on the field and know how to handle situations if they happen. Team manager, for sure. Okay, team treasurer, yes. Club photographer, when approved, okay, the club don't sign up for club photographer, take 78,000 pictures of your child and expect you're getting eight hours. We have a whole team of photographers that do club work for us, okay? So make sure you get approved if you want to do that. And if you do want to be a photographer for the club, reach out to info and we will get it sorted out to the right person. I'm looking at Christy in case she tells me that I'm wrong. She's sitting next to me. <laughs> Okay. And those are just a few. I mean, yeah. there are a couple, there are a bunch of other ways you can help us. Trust me. And they're all very important. I mean, I, without volunteers, you know, this club kind of falls down. Yeah. It almost falls apart. We need your help. A, lot, a little bit more here is once we do give you the okay approval to do one of these jobs up here, you have two weeks, 14 days to get signed up, go through Sports Connect, do your background check. Uh, do your safe sports for some of it. Okay. You have to get all this work done. If you don't, we will not give you hours. Even if you work a thousand hours, if you haven't done your background check, RMA, safe sport, we can't consider you a volunteer. So 14 days, we will help remind you. 
We have a great team manager director, Valerie McHenry, who will be right on top of you to make sure that you get it done. All right. And then Sign Up Genius is what we use. That'll be who you're getting the emails from. Sign Up Genius. Hello, we need help. Here's some ideas for volunteer hours. And um, I think we're good. Yep. Thank you. How about a big thank you ahead of time for all of your volunteering? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Now for the fun slide. Okay. Valor Day. We love Valor Day. It is a day that we celebrate our community and this great club and do a little fundraising to help out our, our sponsorship, our scholarship, um, our, our financial aid bucket. Um, but Valor Day is a great opportunity. We've done this down at North Green River Park the last couple of years, and it's been awesome. We do. Uh, you can see the pictures over there. We got some cornhole. We got some Nerf guns. We got giant foosball game. We had the Tacoma Stars there last year playing soccer tennis with our, our players. Danny Waltman, if you know who that is, run around like a crazy person playing on the bow nets. It was, it was really fun. Um, it is an opportunity for us to fundraise, though. So we ask every Premier and Select team to provide one gift basket with a hundred dollar value. Okay. So put it together, do something cool. I think last year we had one that was like $2,000 value and uh, somebody bought it for like $2,200. Boom. That money goes directly into our funds for uh, scholarships. So it, it was great. Um, the stars put up some great stuff. We had a couple connections with the, uh, with the sounders and whatnot. It, it was a good time. We also do a little dessert. What did we call it? Cakewalk. Keith said, bring two because I have to eat one. <laughs> it's mean to me. Uh, but it's true. Please bring an extra one for me if you want to bring three. Um, that's fine. So Valor Day, se Sunday, September 17th. No home Seahawk game. You're welcome. We waited for the NFL schedule. Uh, we're, we're aware that there are Seahawk fans in this area. So save the date. Sunday, September 17th. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. New uniform kit. Um, you can see the kits over to the right there. We got the gold. We got the black. We got the Valor way, the Valor sh information. Uh, your required kit. You can see the price there, $365. Price is down from two years ago. Inflation who? Yeah. Price is down, KB. <laughs> Okay. Uh, He's going to go sell a used car to you later we, tonight, too. We got so. the goalkeeper kits over there. You can see those two amazing goalkeepers. We got the field kits with our, our friends there. Um, we're excited for this. We are really excited for our new uniforms. So, Capelli Sport. Okay. Good uh, job. I'm actually woo! really going to give him a high five for that. Okay. That was a big chunk. And we are a little bit behind. So, I'm going to fly. Okay. We are going to be done before eight. I oh, promise man. you that. So, this is, of course, a very important part of the Valor experience, uh, especially for players your age. Um, and I will just say this as a college women's soccer head coach myself, every single one of you listening to this tonight can play at the next level. But you have to do uh, things. You've got to be proactive. Um, and you've got to keep an open mind as to where that might be. One of the things we offer is sports recruits. That's a huge thing. And... Um, I literally just put together the rosters today to submit to them. Uh, every premier player uh, that's on this call is going to get a sports recruits uh, account, and you can use that to contact any college coach, attach your video, send emails. It's a fantastic resource, and I will uh, show a little bit more of it to you on an upcoming webinar. We also have other resources, including those webinars. That's uh, Johnny Keblish, who plays at George Fox. He was a Valor soccer player. He did a Q&A with us last year. We have a checklist that you can go through to make sure you're on time in terms of what you need to be doing when to maximize your exposure. And then the VO cameras, we have five of them now. So uh, you, as a U16 to U19 player, especially the premier players, you are going to see a VO camera at almost all, if not all, of your matches. We will work very hard to make that happen so that you can obviously watch yourself play and get better, but create the highlight videos, and we'll be able to help you with that as well. What does it lead to? You can get there from here. I'm going to put it candidly. 
There is no need for you to move on to any other soccer platform or any other uh, soccer opportunity uh, to play at the next level. These are eight recent examples of kids that worked hard, not only with their soccer, but with contacting college coaches to get to the next level. And here's what's really exciting. Next week, we're going to announce the class of 2023, and we're going to celebrate them as well. We're not going to tell you who they are. We're really excited, though. Yeah, you may know, but they're heading to places like Willamette down in Salem, Whatcom and Bellingham, Edmonds. I'm not even going to tell you what that what that uh, logo with the big horns is. You're going to have to look that one up yourself. <laughs> I think most people know PLU. We've got a player who just committed to the Lutes last weekend, and one of them flew to Spain last week to be a part of an international academy. So mm-hmm. you're going to hear about those kids next week. Other resources for you. We're going to do an evaluation for you uh, through Team Genius. Ray mentioned the soccer nutrition. We've got that handout. You ask me for that, I'm going to give it to you, period. We have the YouTube channel. It's got a bunch of resources for you. And then that individual work, both technical and fitness, that you can do. Um, we built those during the COVID era, and they still apply today. So that's all stuff that's available to you. Reach out to your head coach, and they'll get in touch with the director. We'll get you the stuff you need. Okay, we're almost there, folks. Uh, quick schedule, quick schedule here, okay? Elite 64 uh, and our premier gold teams. Tournaments for the summer, two to three. Coach's decision, you'll have information either at your team meeting or shortly after, okay? June 29th through July 3rd. This is the E64 National Finals in San Diego. This is for last year's 22-23 playing cycle team. Now, if you're new here, your coach, if he's got space or she has space, may ask you if you're interested to go because we can add to the roster. Um, And then the Elite 64 League play is possible play in the summer here. Uh, But like I said, we're hopeful to have those those timeframes for you uh, by June. And we got a couple summer breaks here, July 1st, July 9th, August 28th through September 4th. Um, and those are for rest, recovery. We say take those breaks. There's also Relax. something called the 4th of July. Hello, fun, right? And right, Labor I Day. remember that. Yeah. 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 All right. And then you know what? Why don't you take a real break and go play high school soccer? Which take- we encourage. We think it's fantastic. <laughs> In fact, I've been coaching one for almost 10 years. So, yeah, it's been uh, very exciting. So girls' high school season starts uh, at the end of August. I believe it's August 21st this year for tryouts. Um, And then you guys are – you were there till about the beginning of November. We'll start getting fired back up. There is an Elite 64 playoffs in November. So as soon as you're done with high school, we're going to Mesa. So your teams, if you're an Elite 64, may be doing a little gatherings on the weekends. Start working things out, okay? Info to come. Got a couple holiday breaks in November and December. You can see those over there. And then we jump into your league season beginning of uh, December. Okay. Um, If you're not completed in the summer, which it won't be, uh, you'll play the rest of your E64 league play. This is, like I said, three weekends, one local, one Portland, one Utah. These are likely to happen this way. Okay. We are working this out right now. You'll also play RCL league play, jump into state cup near the end of this uh, spring, Um, If your team performs well at the playoffs, you'll be getting ready for the National Pro Event in California. And then you know what we'll do? All over again. Tryouts and team formation meetings, which is really what we look forward to each year, is doing this team formation meeting Twitch call. (laughs) I'm going to be prepping my hair after this for next year. (laughs) As in hoping it doesn't fall out. (laughs) All right. For our our, uh, premier... Black teams, Uh, they'll also be doing two to three summer tournaments, and the coaches are working with directors right now on good choices there. So hopefully at your team meeting, you'll get that information. Summer breaks are the same. High school season is the same. And then we go two breaks in the holiday time period for for the club. And then, boom, your season starts. Okay, Washington Youth Soccer, RCL play, State Cup or President's Cup. And then we do it all over again. Tryouts, and we'll do it again. And our select teams, very similar. Yep. Pretty similar. Two to three breaks, high school season, couple breaks in the holidays, start the season. NPSL play December through, I 
think April first select, but pretty close. Mm -hmm. And then for the for the girls select, they play in Presidents Cup, not Founders. The Founders Cup is uh, in December, so they actually play in the Presidents Cup. And depending on the level they're at, they'll either play in Division One, Two. I don't think they have three for this age group. Okay. But. And then do it all over again. We'll do tryouts again. Unless you're born in 2005, and then we wish then, you the very best on your way to your you college degree won't and your do it over again. incredible yeah. career and your college team and your listen, life. Listen, folks, the next slide is one we really want you to see. Yep. It's the most important slide. The we last slide. We did it. <laughs> the last slide. Not quite 42 minutes. 54 is what I meant to say. Sub, sub hour. Less than an hour, less, Ray. Less than an hour. And follow us on uh, social media, all those various channels. Yep. Yes, we've got a lot of them. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I don't know what that thing is. It's the tip, TikTok. I think, they call it, I think they call it Tick. I think the kids call it TickGram. And then there's Instachat, I think, and <laughs> Snapbook. I think those are the three. Yeah, they mistaken. sound amazing. I know I'm going to be looking it up when I get out of here and make sure I have one so that I'm ready for this season. Uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Uh, like we said, this is our third one of the season. Um, and we, we actually do have a little bit of fun. We're trying to give you as much info as we can at the same time. But we know that an hour of watching us can be a little tedious, especially with all the info. So, um, so Keith and I try to keep it casual like these shoes he has on. Um, don't show them, don't show them, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do need uh, to show them one thing though, Ray. Yeah, there and is we're uh, like, almost done and we have a couple of people at our door out there. They you just want that? autographs. They yeah. want autographs. It's obvious. Right, clearly. Um, there is a, uh, for the U16 to U19 teams, um, the Washington Soccer Rules Committee voted, uh, and they need to make the ball a little bit bigger. That's right. So we're moving to a size six ball. Size six. And yeah. this is, this, Ray was the... Was the actual vote? It was really right? pushing yeah. for it. I thought it would be really good. So, so here it is. <laughs> this so is the level that we're going to be working with. Here's the year. size six ball. Good luck hitting that. And that's uh, just for size reference. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Capelli, the new partner. Okay, I think we're done. I think we're done. We're done hey, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. As we say, whenever we say things, we are valor. <laughs>